Let's uh, turn in our Bibles to the New Testament as we continue this morning's series of responding to Jesus in Luke chapter uh, Luke chapter 19. We're going to begin reading though at the end of chapter 18. It's on page 1053. We'll begin reading at Luke 18 and verse 35. Let's uh, hear God's word. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see. He replied, Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, for your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not, because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the, people saw, all the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Amen. This is the Word of God. Well, with the Lord's help, we return to... Uh, Luke chapter 19, we read again at uh, verse 5. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. For the benefit of those who uh, were not there on Wednesday evening, I was just sharing a little bit about previous uh, mission trips out to Moldova and a pending trip this summer, Lord willing. But I was emphasizing how much I feel out of my comfort zone when I go to that country. But that's actually a good thing because it makes me lean all the more on the Lord. However, in preparation for uh, this service, uh, this illustration and this memory from one of my trips to Moldova came to mind when I was asked by the Moldovans to climb this gigantic tree. Me, fairly small Scottish guy, climbed that tree just to put a rope over the highest branch so that the crazy Moldovans would have a rope to swing on. I remember wondering why, as I was climbing this tree, why I thought it was a good idea to come here. I was not comfortable up there. 
And as I looked down, I certainly didn't like what I saw. But we meet Zacchaeus today, and he had a totally different experience when he climbed the tree. He used it to get to a vantage point. It wasn't to play a game or to set up a game. It was to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. All this is taking place in the city called Jericho, the city of the Palms. It was certainly known as a desirable place. You know, the meaning of the name Jericho has to do with perfume, because on the breeze you could smell, often I'm told, uh, the rose gardens and the blooming flowers that are there. It was also a military and a commercial center. So there was all sorts of people gathering into Jericho. There was businessmen and there was military men. There was old and young. There was rich and there was poor. But Jericho was also the last stop before Jerusalem. Before many were making their make their final push up to the city, they would stop on their pilgrimage in Jericho, a great place for the tax collectors to come and make an extra penny or ten. But I want today to focus on Zacchaeus. I want to see what his response is to Jesus. So we'll look at three things. Seek, see, and saved. He was seeking Jesus. He sees Jesus. And he's saved by Jesus. So we begin in verse 1. He is seeking Jesus. You can see it in your Bibles. Chapter 19 and verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. Jesus was coming. There would have been... uh, somewhat used to groups of people and perhaps even royalty passing through Jericho from time to time because of its route up to Jerusalem. But on this day, Jesus was going to pass through. What will he say, if anything at all? What will he do? Will he perform another healing miracle like he just did outside of the city with this blind man? A large crowd was now assembling to catch a glimpse of Jesus of Nazareth. I don't know what they were expecting. I don't know if they knew what to expect from Jesus. They've heard all sorts of stories about him, perhaps. And maybe they could think, well, if he can heal him, he can heal me. Or he could heal my children or bless my children. So I'll lift them up and whichever one comes first, healing or blessing, I'll take it. And then running ahead of the crowd, though, we meet this man, Zacchaeus. You know the name Zacchaeus actually means pure or just. So when his parents would have named him Zacchaeus, they had great intentions that their son would grow up to be pure and just. Well, certainly in these early years of his life, however many years it was, he was very far from being pure. He didn't even show as if he knew what justice was at all. He becomes a tax collector, synonymous at that time with becoming a thief. Now, the choice of career, it immediately isolated you from the rest of society. Nobody wants to be the tax collector's friend. Nobody would hang out with you because they couldn't trust you. Your reputation has gone before you. This was the case with Zacchaeus as well. He was no different. He was just like all the other tax collectors. Now we may moan when we look at our own uh, pay slips and we see how much tax has been deducted. But in Jericho, new taxes would be invented on the spot. The collectors would take a percentage for themselves. Zacchaeus was just lining his own pockets at the expense of his own people. 
far from being pure or just. Zacchaeus was greedy and he was wicked. No, no wonder the people thought of him to be a sinner. If anyone didn't deserve to see or to speak with Jesus, then it was this guy. It's not just that we don't like him, but he's really not a nice man. He would just as easily take the last dime from a little child as he would from an elderly woman. Just look at the mansion that he lives in compared to the houses that we are in. To see all of these starving people and the banquets that go on in his house. He's too far gone, they thought, to have an encounter with Jesus. He is a sinner. He cannot meet the Savior. Well, we come then to verse 3. And we see what Zacchaeus says. He says, or it says of him, he wanted to see who Jesus was. Probably while he was taking extra money, stealing money from the locals, he would have heard the chatter about the fact that Jesus was coming to town. Why are they all getting so excited about this Jesus? Why is there a a crowd gathering on this day to see Jesus passing through? Who is this guy? And so we see a desire awakens in him. A desire to meet with Jesus. You know, not everybody wants to see Jesus. Not everybody wants to meet him. Not everybody in Tain is in this church or in any of our churches. Why not? Because they don't have a desire to hear about Jesus. You go to work or school tomorrow or into the town. And as many of you have done with invitation services, you've invited your friends and family to church. So you know what the response is very often. Do you want to come and know Jesus? No thanks. You could walk up to somebody on the street or even somebody you know very well, even a spouse, and you could say to that person, "Ah, can I share with you the greatest news I've ever heard which has changed my life and now I have a future in heaven to look forward to. Maybe another time, they say. Not everybody wants to meet with Jesus. Not everybody comes, not everybody has the desire to come to church on a Sunday morning. Not everybody wants to hear what God's Word says. But on this day, in Jericho, Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. Why? Why does he want to see Jesus? Well, maybe he was curious. There was maybe a hype around the city about Jesus' arrival. A large crowd was assembling and so Zacchaeus doesn't want to miss out. Maybe he was curious. Maybe there was a connection. And there was a connection. Zacchaeus' old colleague, certainly Levi, was a tax collector as well. And Levi has now left this criminal business. And now he's a follower of Jesus Christ. Perhaps Levi had shared with his colleagues before he left inviting them to come and hear what Jesus had to say. There was a connection, maybe. Maybe he wants to come and see Jesus because of his conscience. Maybe deep, deep down inside of him, he's found a conscience. Was he looking around at his big house and his fancy clothes and his full wallet and thinking, maybe there's more to life and all of this. I thought money would make everything better. Or maybe it was companionship. Even though he has all this money, all these possessions, he's nobody to share it with. He has no friends. Nobody likes the guy because he would take the last note from anybody just to put the note in his own pocket. Jesus became a friend of Levi, he was thinking. Maybe he could become 
my friend too. Or what was it? What was it about Zacchaeus that made him come and seek Jesus? Or what is it about you that makes you come here and seek Jesus? Why has that desire awoken in your heart? It wasn't there before, but it's there now. Is it curiosity? I have no doubt that some of you are curious to find out more about Jesus. You want to know, is he the real deal? Is it a connection? Of course, for many of you, family or friends or those in the community have in recent years become Christians. You know them better than anybody. They're not perfect. But you've seen that there's a big change in their life, in the way they speak, in the way they act. And so, because of your connection, because you're seeing other lives change, you're wondering about it for your own life. Or is it your conscience? Maybe you're not too dissimilar to our friends, a case. I don't mean stealing and robbing from your friends and family, I hope, but you have all of a sudden become convicted. You didn't have that conviction before. But there's a conviction, something stinging inside about actions you've done in the past, about sins you've obviously committed like we all have. You're aware of sin like you never used to be. Maybe your conscience is pricking you. Why have these feelings started now? Or maybe it is companionship. Maybe you are lonely. Even though you're surrounded by friends and family every day, yet you feel totally isolated. What is causing this unrest? Seeking Jesus, wanting to see Him. Not everybody is doing it. So why is that interest being stirred in you? Why are you seeking Jesus? I was preaching in Stornoway last weekend and after one of the services somebody uh, messaged me and in their message they said for the first time having been in church for a while I heard every single word that you said in the sermon and that I have been seeking and searching for Jesus over the last few weeks or months. Maybe you have as well been seeking Jesus. But perhaps, as I said to this person who messaged me, perhaps the Lord has already found you if you have started searching for the Lord. Perhaps He's already found you if you've started searching for Him. So, Zacchaeus was seeking. Secondly, we come to what he sees. There's always hindrances when anybody starts seeking for Jesus. Satan doesn't like it. He doesn't allow us just to have the path smooth and straight. He will do everything in his power to stop the sinner seeking the Savior. You found that already, I think. You've found that hindrances, barriers have come up in your own mind or practically in your own situations. For Zacchaeus, it was no different. He was blind to Jesus, just like the beggar at the end of of chapter 18 was too. Both of them couldn't see Jesus, but for very different reasons. But both of them encountered Jesus, and both of them responded to him. Whatever their hindrances were, and with Zacchaeus it was even his height, he was too small to even physically see Jesus. But he perseveres. He could have turned up that day and thought, there's no chance, I'm going to see Jesus, I'm just going to go home. No, he perseveres and he climbs this tree. Something is holding you back. You just won't take that last step. 
to actually say to somebody, I am a Christian. Or to say to yourself, to say to the Lord, I love the Lord Jesus. Something is stopping you from doing that. Well, we've all heard when somebody publicly professes their faith that oh, they've been Christians for years. But what stopped them? Fear of man, fear of other people, most likely. Fear of not being good enough. Thinking, what if I mess up? Persevere. Do not let Satan keep you from releasing your burden and leaning with your whole life upon the Lord. So Zacchaeus perseveres and he climbs this tree and now he can see everything. He has a bird's eye view of all that was happening. How strange it must have been for the crowd as not only was there a man up a tree, but it was this man, this greedy and wicked man, Zacchaeus, what does he want with Jesus? Humanly speaking, there's been a few shocks when person A or B walks into any church. But that is what the Holy Spirit does. The first will be last and the last will be first. You know, time has softened the blow even in this church with some of you who are Christians and members here. You wouldn't have expected him or expected her. But it's amazing. It's amazing grace. Maybe you can think even about yourself, Christian, and think back a few years, 10 years, 20 years. And if you had asked yourself then, would you be here? You would have said, no chance. You would never have in a million years thought that you would be sitting in this church this morning. And yet, Jesus found you. Of all the people that were there that day, in Jericho as the crowd is around him, Jesus walks down the street and he stops at the exact spot that Zacchaeus is hanging in the tree. The crowd were all at eye level with him, but Jesus looks up and catches the eye of Zacchaeus. You would almost think that this was planned. Zacchaeus looks down and Jesus looks up. Who was looking for who? While well, Zacchaeus was seeking Jesus, Jesus had already found Zacchaeus. This was no chance encounter. He wasn't just lucky to meet with Jesus that day. Jesus was on a mission, and he is on a mission today to bring every one of his own to himself. It is not for no reason that you are here today. It is not everybody that has this feeling and desire to know more about Jesus. If you are truly seeking Him, then I believe He has already been seeking you. And now He is coming toward you. And so what will be your response? As Jesus called to Zacchaeus, come down, will he come? Well, we see that lastly. Zacchaeus is saved. Let's read verse 5. Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Not only does Jesus see this little man up the tree, but he speaks to him as well. Zacchaeus encountered Jesus and he had to make a response to Jesus in that moment. Do you think he would have been given another opportunity if he didn't take this one? If he just ignored Jesus and said, not yet. Maybe once I'm older. Maybe once I'm better. Maybe once I'm healthier. You are encountering Jesus today. And he is waiting for your response. Jesus knows his name. How did he know that? Because he's already been seeking Zacchaeus. He knows everything about him. 
his name, his height, where he lives, every wrong deed that he's ever done in his whole life. He knows it all, and yet he still calls Zacchaeus, come down. He was in no doubt that it was him Jesus was speaking to. There was nobody else up that tree. And you and I know, whether we are seeking or whether we are already Christians, when Jesus is speaking into our hearts, there is no mistake. He is calling you to commit to him. He is calling you, Christian, to flee from that sin. He is calling us all closer to him. You can imagine what the locals had to say about this. Him. But he's a sinner. Don't you know what kind of guy this is? The crowd would have had all sorts of expectations of what Jesus might do or say that day he was passing through Jericho. But I don't think they would have expected this. I don't think they would have expected, of all people, Zacchaeus to be called and for Jesus to dine with him. I'm sure as Zacchaeus would have rushed down that tree to entertain Jesus, the religious zealots maybe would have been on his case, muttering, we read, to themselves, and they could have potentially tried to trip him up. The religious zealots could have been shouting or muttering to Zacchaeus, if you're so holy and you're going to go and be with Jesus, then tell us this, what does sanctification mean? I don't know, I just, Jesus has asked me to come and I'm coming. Okay, then tell us this, this is an easy one. Of all the laws that were given to Moses, not just the first ten, but recite the rest of them. I don't know, but, but Jesus has called me and I need to go with Jesus. People may be saying to you, or you are probably saying to yourself, I can't become a Christian because I don't know enough. You think everybody else in this church has like three degrees in theology and you don't even know what theology really means. Well, let's look again at these ten verses. Chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. Let's find the test that Jesus gave to Zacchaeus before he could become a Christian. Let's see the test. There is no test. He said, come. And he came. Jesus is asking you to come. Yes, our learning and our growing and our studying of our Bibles will follow on. But today, today if you see yourself as a sinner and Jesus Christ as your Savior, then he's saying come. And don't let any hindrance, don't let anything stop you. Why is the case, though? Why you? Why me? There were surely good and upright people in the crowd, nice people who have done lots of positive things to other people. Surely it could have been one of them. Surely they're better than Zacchaeus. Well, it was Zacchaeus because of verse 10. Jesus came to seek and to save what was lost. You know, many good people never became Christians. Many good people were never saved. It is not really about whether we are bad or good. It is recognizing that I am lost, that I am a sinner, that I cannot do this on my own, that I need Jesus. And this was Jesus' mission, to save sinners, and He will leave not one behind. We see a great illustration of this in the parables Jesus gives in Luke 15. There are these parables. Let me give you two of them. The lost sheep. He had 99 sheep, but one of them was lost. Surely 99 is enough. No, Jesus will leave none behind. Then there's the woman with the coin. She's lost one coin. She has nine coins. Surely nine is enough. No, Jesus will leave none behind. Then there's Tain and Fern congregation. Surely there's enough Christians here in Tain and Fern. No, Jesus will leave none behind. 
He is coming for every single one. The robber, Zacchaeus, becomes the giver. He gives away his possessions. He repays those that he has stolen from. His greater becomes generosity. To say Jesus is now in your life is important. But to show that Jesus is in your life is so much more important. We shall know them. That's God's children. That's the Christians. We shall know them by the fruit that they bear. In the way that they show and live out their faith in Christ. Seek, see and be saved. Whatever your background is. No matter how messy. No matter how good. Come down. The Master is calling. Amen. Let's pray. Lord our God, we thank you that we see that in this uh, passage in your Bible that you knew Zacchaeus and you were going to meet him when he thought he was coming to meet you. Even though he was seeking you, Lord, you were already seeking him out. And we pray, Lord, for those who are seeking you privately, even in this building today, we pray that salvation would come to their house and to their lives. And this is your work. And we leave it to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's uh, sing Psalm of Salvation in Psalm 18, Psalm 118. And the tune is Cresselius. In the Sing Psalms, Psalm 118 is on page 155. We'll sing from the beginning to verse 9. Oh, thank the Lord, for He is good. His steadfast love endures always. Now let the house of Israel say, His love will last through endless days. Psalm 118, from the beginning to God's praise. Oh, thank the Lord for
grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you, both now and forevermore. Amen.